Hello and welcome to the Manufacturing Spirit podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Anil Kumar, who is the MD of Seratigit Group. And we are going to discuss how Seratigit Group has grown in India for past several decades. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting us here. Thank you. So kindly please tell us about the growth story of Seratigit. How did you grow this company? Yeah. After formation of Seratigit in 2002, uh, at that time, we had only one plant, <coughs> and we started from Calcutta. And uh, <coughs> starting from Calcutta is, uh, you know, quite intriguing because nobody generally starts from Calcutta. But over the years, we have uh, we had no problems by having a plant in Calcutta. We did lot of investments in Calcutta and uh, started serving our customers. Over the years, uh, different companies were taken over, mainly to have uh, technology advantage, advantage and also your inorganic growth. So during the journey till now, GW Guntavet became part of the group worldwide as well as in India. Then a smaller company, Cobra Carbide, was merged. And then later on, Comet became part of the Seratizit group. And as of now, uh, we are one unit. All units are basically legally merged. And now we are only Seratizit India. With almost 500 employees, we are serving our customers with latest technology, latest tools, in our portfolio, we have almost 100,000 tools wow. which are there in the catalog itself. So that helps our customers to select the tool quickly. And then uh, our second strategy is to have a better service and serve our customers quickly. Not only to provide tools, but to provide solutions. So these things are helping us to grow further Amazing. and further. Amazing, sir. So, uh, organic and inorganic growth uh, both has contributed to overall journey. Like, you have grown organically, plus you have acquired a lot of companies. Technology yeah. transfer has happened. Yeah. You have grew your product portfolio. I mean, it's such a diverse product portfolio. 100,000 yeah. products. I mean, anybody, any customer can get a tool from your uh, catalog, right? Yeah, sure. So as of uh, as of now, in India we have three plants. Okay. So two in Bangalore, one in Calcutta. So basically, we are producing a large range in India also. In addition to that, whatever we don't do it, we get from Europe. So Europe has a larger range and some range to serve customers. We do it here. Awesome. So, sir, what has been your secret? I mean, uh, what kind of best practices you, you have implemented on your company so and built such a great, uh, you know, work culture in your company which has boosted this growth? Yeah. So, Sarat is it as a company uh, focuses on their employees and uh, we have been doing uh, inclusive development. So basically, we focus uh, on upgrading the skills of the people, continuously training, hand-holding, and bringing them up. So we have uh, in-house training courses from the group itself. And uh, in India also, we keep on doing as per the uh, our overall guidance. And the uh, second thing is uh, we believe not in providing tools. We believe in providing solutions to the customers. So employees have become part of the company. They take it as a family. And most of our employees are with us uh, for now 15, 20, 30 years. So that itself shows that we have a strong culture and we are strongly customer-oriented company. Great. That is a very fascinating approach, you know, because yeah. Uh, mostly companies say we are customer focused, but you are customer focused as well as employee focused, right? Yeah, sure. So because company is made up of employees, right? Yeah. And when employees are happy and they are appreciated and they are being trained and, you know, they feel motivated to work harder, right? Yeah. And that has been a, a big, uh, you know, your That initiate. helps a lot, yes. That helps a lot. 
Great. So, uh, sir, moving on to you know emerging uh, technologies now. E-mobility is coming. Electric. We everybody is talking about electric vehicle. Yeah. So, uh, and you are uh, your business is majorly into more than fifty percent is in automotive sector only. Sure. Yes. Which has been a primarily a biggest market in yeah. terms of manufacturing in India. Correct. So, uh, with the emergence of electric vehicles, how is is it going to disrupt this market? What are the challenging you are facing when the engines will be uh, will not be there in yeah. the future? Yeah, so uh, there are two aspects to this. You know, disruption will be there, but there is also opportunity. So engines will not be there, but there are other components which are coming in. Trays and components for the batteries. And uh, in between, I believe that there will be hybrid range, and there the tooling requirement will basically increase. So. I think there will be a fair balance for the requirement. And we have already come up mm, strongly with the solutions for electric vehicles also. We have a complete portfolio for automotive, including electric vehicles. So that helps our customers. Besides that, in India, you know, aerospace is growing, uh, automotive, uh, besides automotive, mechanical engineering is growing, railway business is growing aerospace, in defense is growing. So there are a lot many opportunities. So yeah. we have to look into the opportunities. <laughs> that is correct. That yeah. is that's very interesting that you are talking about opportunities. And there are opportunities when there is, every time when there is a disruption or crisis. Yeah. So talking about the opportunities, I think aerospace, defense, as you said, medical implants manufacturing, electronics yeah. manufacturing correct. has started uh, in India in a big way now. Yeah. And it is a growing market for you as well. So yeah. how do you think, uh, what kind of opportunities are there for you in this uh, segment? Yes, uh, I'll say there is a great opportunity. We already have, uh, uh, I'll say a catalog basically for medical components. So we already do a good business in Europe and in India we have started growing in the medical segment. And the new emerging segment is the electronic segment. Mm -hmm. You know, all kind of mobiles, electronic watches, laptops, uh, all these things require a lot of tooling, actually. And we are already, we have started in a small way in this. We have the capabilities to serve these segments, and we are taking this opportunity. Amazing, amazing. So let's uh, uh, go to your favorite topic now, sustainability. I yeah. think you are taking a big initiative in sustainability and yeah. you are doing a lot of things, you know. Yeah. And uh, can you please elaborate on that? Yeah. See, sustainability is uh, our initiative, group initiative, and we have taken it very, very seriously and aggressively. Our goals uh, are to be leader in sustainability and that's as soon as 2025. Wow. And... Uh, we will be actually carbon neutral by 2025 by different measures. And then next goal will be in 2030 where we reduce the carbon footprint by almost 60%. And then by 2040 will be net, neut net negative. So that is uh, I think quite ahead of the UN target of 2050. So different actions are already taken on these front. Uh, it's not only energy conservation, but we are securing our natural resources for the future generations. First and foremost thing what we are doing is conserving what we use as a raw material. So our basic metal uh, is uh, tungsten, and we are already doing a lot of recycling in that. We have to conserve it, secure our future, because uh, the resources are depleting and we have to come to this side. So we have already started. We have invested in uh, recycling plants in uh, Tawanda we have a plan, in uh, Austria, Royate we have a plan. We do a lot of recycling there. And we have already come up with a, you know, uh, a product which is called green carbide. We have produced rods out of it and uh, that's really working. The carbon footprint 
required to produce these rods is just 2.6 kilogram of uh, carbon dioxide. Against a requirement of, uh, you know, for a standard rod, you require somewhere between 19 to 30 kilogram of carbon. Wow. So that is a huge reduction. Yeah. And recently we got a MM award in AMB show also for this. And we amazing. also produce two lot of this. And for that also we got an award. Wow. <laughs> Basically this tool is giving almost 10%, uh, to be exact 9% we did test. And uh, we got almost 109% of performance as compared to our, to our standard high grade uh, product from virgin powder. Wow. So you are making in environment friendly product but also getting the higher performance as well. Yes, that's it. So it is a double benefit basically. Tomorrow every company will start uh, working on this and this product uh, will help them to reduce their carbon footprint. And that's not only thing we are doing, we are next is, you know, energy conserv conservation. So we are, we are already investing in that. As a group, uh, I'll say in Luxembourg, recently we put up a largest solar panels on our all uh, car parking area. So that is biggest in Luxembourg. Wow. There will be generating a lot of electricity which will be used for our uh, requirements. In India, we have already invested, and in Calcutta, we have put a big uh, solar panel plant, okay. which is helping us. Besides that, we are also, you know, uh, working for water conservation. So in all, all our plants, uh, we have uh, soak pits, we recharge the earth with all rain waters and uh, extra water and all that. Uh, so all these things we are taking care of. This is amazing. I mean, this yeah. is an incredible effort you are taking, you know, for the sustainability. And this is required right now, you know, with right. all these uh, climate change uh, challenges. Correct. And uh, 2025 carbon neutral is a very, very ambitious goal. And I think with the initiative and the effort and the hard work you yeah. are put in, you, are, you will be definitely be able to <laughs> definitely, achieve yes. that goal very soon. Yeah. So, sir, uh, we are quite confident on that. <laughs> yeah. So, I think, and uh, one more thing, uh, when we were discussing earlier that uh, you have a very integrated supply chain, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, from raw material to the end product, you are doing uh, it's everything itself in the group. So, you yeah. will be able to, uh, you know, do it faster than anybody else. It's an advantage as well in terms of business plus from the sustainability point of view also. When the raw material is environment friendly, then product itself will become environment friendly. Correct. So um, that's one of the big advantage for us. Uh, the whole cycle of production is within the group. Right from the raw material, all the resources are within our group. So outside China, we are actually one of the largest producer of the raw material also. Wow. And that secures our supply chain. So in case of any disruption in the world, whether it's war or any other thing, we are quite sure that we'll keep on serving our customers. No, that's that's very uh, big advantage because right now there are wars happening and uh, the supply chain disruption is ha happening because yeah. of COVID also it happened. So uh, it, uh, it becomes very reliable when customers will be discussing with you about their requirements because you Correct. have whole supply chain under your control. Correct. And it will be a very reliable thing for the customers. Yeah, that's definitely an advantage. <laughs> Great. So, uh, sir, tell me about what kind of, because now Imtex is happening hmm. uh, very soon yeah. after four years. Yeah. So, I'm sure you will be coming up with some futuristic technologies, Industry 4.0 yeah. yeah. and all. So yeah. Can you please explain me about uh, those upcoming sure. technologies? So, we are coming up uh, with a lot of futuristic products. Uh, we'll talk definitely about sustainability and under that what we did is green carbide. We have already come out with a grid and that will be showcasing. We'll showcasing the tools produced out of uh, this green carbide. Mm, so customer can see that. And besides that, we'll be showcasing our latest technologies. Uh, one of them is Industry 4.0. We have uh, uh, like products like tool scope 
which can be integrated with the machines and that is our product and uh, customers get benefited in terms of productivity uh, that this technology helps them in saving cost in different uh, points uh, tool breakages, tool monitoring, increasing the life, optimizing the parameters, and uh, optimizing the cycle. So it's a really great advantage. Besides that, we have also come up mm, with uh, electronic tools, basically. You know, simple example, a boring bar, you can set it manually. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not manually, electronically. Okay. So that is a big advantage. Otherwise, uh, earlier you used to take uh, fine setting tools to a presetter, set it again, spend some time, bring it back, put to the machine. Now right on the machine we can see it and just change it quickly. So these kind of the things we are bringing to the market for the benefit of the customer. Amazing. Yeah, besides that, uh, so one of the new product is Freeturn. Uh, which has changed the definition of uh, turning. And uh, the advantage of free turn technology is with one insert, you can basically machine a complicated component with different profiles. You don't need to change the insert. And with the help of this uh, product and machine, you can really finish the component. So that's also kind of a new technology which helps the customers. This, this will be very, very fantastic. And we are looking forward to see all these technologies in Imtech show. Right. So sir, uh, uh, and now we were talking about the futuristic technology. So now uh, as a uh, industry veteran, we would like to understand how do you think India is going to emerge as a big manufacturing player at the global stage? What do you think about next 10 years? how Indian economy, specifically manufacturing sector, is going to grow in the next 10 years? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we'll grow very fast. Uh, uh, different things are helping government uh, policies, make in India. And besides that, uh, the major factor is reliability and, uh, you know, technically qualified people. Mm. So these things will definitely help in the growth of technology and ultimately manufacturing and ultimately achieving the goals of uh, economy. Definitely. And I think uh, as our government is also pushing us uh, very uh, in a good way that we have to become a five trillion economy very soon, third yeah. largest economy in the world. Yeah. I think target is uh, for uh, 2027, I guess. Yeah. So, and manufacturing sector will play a very, very big role in that. Sure, I think we'll achieve uh, definitely before that. <laughs> yeah, we are all optimistic about that, right? Yeah. So, sir, uh, at the end of the podcast, we would like to, you know, request you for any message to our global audience who are watching you right now. Yeah. So, stage is all yours. So, thank you. As a company, we are focusing on sustainability besides providing uh, not tooling, but solutions to our customers. And I think that is very important for our future generations. We have, take, we have to take care of our resources and give a clean environment, clean earth for our generations to come along with latest technology. So both things can go hand in hand and uh, everyone has to cut. We are showcasing our latest technologies in Imtex, which is going to happen uh, at BIEC, Bangalore, and our hall number is three, stall number is 114. So I request all our customers and future customers to please visit us and have a look on the latest technology. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. It yeah. was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for having me.